I thought I was gonna say something real cool, something profound and, and, and you know intellectual. I just let like let that cliffhanger just to fall onto the floor. But no, I don't I don't know what it is. I don't I don't I do think that God leaves it um, opaque, if you will, so that we can fill in um, whatever you need to fill in. So that you can recognize that all of us have something different. It touches us, it, that it balances us, that makes us pray in the middle of the night, that makes us groan in the middle of the night. Um, we say, I need you, I need you, I can't take this, it's too much for me, it's too much for me. You know, I just this is too much, I can't take it, I don't want to take it. Just being overwhelmed, telling God I'm not happy. All of this stuff and no peace. Or all of this peace and no stuff. It's going it, it'll be either one of them. Please believe me, it'll be either one of them. So <clears throat> getting back to the message. Um so, anyways, Paul he says that these these are the things that that assailed my soul. It touched me in the in the like it punched me in the gut. It balanced whatever accomplishments that I had brought me down to a place of humility. And he's he said, I prayed. Hold on, let me just before I even go there. Uh, I want you to see we don't know what it was, but we do know how he felt about it. He prevailed before God three about it three times. Both pain. Now, we know that it was both painfully privately, and we know that it was humiliating publicly. Um, and that's why some people thought it was um, that it was like epilepsy, because imagine how wide and profound and intellectual he would be, and then have you know an epileptic seizure in front of everybody. Whatever it was, it was humiliating. It was de debil debilitating. They, um, that whatever it was, it was not only secretly painful, but it was publicly, publicly humiliating. And I'm like right in the middle of trying to do what you want me to do and be who you need me to be. There would, there would be something that just takes over and just buffet that would just make us stumble around and we couldn't see. And, and he, you know, he, and we know that he didn't particularly have, he wasn't the most best looking man and he didn't under, you know, we would understand that he would. Wasn't much of a looker. He had the things going on with his eyes. But yet he still was br brilliant. He was intellectual. So I'm trying to get you to understand how life balances itself out. And how no one, no one gets everything. And no one is is exempt from pain. And and I'm trying to, I guess, just try to make you understand that God is just. He, even if it's not fair, he's got to be just. That he balances it. That you are not going to get through this whole world without using some of those tear ducts he gave you. I want everyone to, or anyone listening to this to understand that you will not survive this world no matter how intellectual, no matter how beautiful, no matter how bulging your biceps may be and triceps may, may be, and no matter how how many degrees that you may have, even more than a thermometer, that, that there will be something in life that's going to be punching you in the gut that leaves you on the floor and saying, I don't know. I don't speak Greek and Hebrew, but I don't know how to speak to my kids. I don't know, you know, there's always going to be something that escapes, you know, that escapes and that, 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 that humbles you and, 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 and it, sometimes it humiliates you and takes you, just takes the air out of you like, like a bloom. But he says this, but it was for this that I prayed. Now you must understand the power of this prayer. The power of this prayer is built on the enormity of the burdens that he carries. He prays, he prays three times. He prays three times about what has overwhelmed him. And I'm here to talk to you today about what over, what's been overwhelming you. And I'm not here to, I'm not here to talk to you about what you win. I'm talking about, I'm here to talk to you about things that you don't. I don't want to talk to you, uh, talk to you about things that you feel about. I'm talking to you about the things that you do feel about. I don't want to talk to you about the things that overwhelm. I'm talking about the things that, where you're just like, I can't take it anymore. If one more thing happens to me, you're like, and 
like it. Ooh, if one more thing happens to be. So uh, please, if you can, write down overwhelmed. So please write down overwhelmed. And, and, and think about it. What overwhelms you? I mean, takes you out. Rocks your world. Gets on your last nerve. So Paul, he says, he says, God, I'm out here working for you and I am responsible for I will be responsible for most of the most of the New Testament writings. I have established churches everywhere that you've sent me. I have preached the gospel of power and clarity, even when you was even when I was in jail. I have laid hands, he says, on dead people and seen them get out of the grave. And so I'm asking you one small favor, Father God. He says, I don't I don't ask you for much. I don't I don't I don't bother you. I, I didn't I didn't say nothing when I was being shipwrecked. I didn't say nothing when I was being beaten. I didn't say nothing when I was being in locked up in jail. But this is just one favor, Father God. Just take this away. Because this 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 overwhelms me. Uh, it's just too much for me. I'm drowning in it. It gets me down. It's wrecking my life. It gets me out of focus. Take it away, he says. Take it away. And I don't mean to sound like, you know, over, but I need you to understand the power of this prayer. This is not somebody praying for a parking space and, 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 and let things go good at work today. And, and no, he's, this is not one, he's praying about what overwhelms his very soul. He says, he says, I wouldn't have brought it to you, Father God. I wouldn't have brought it to you if you, if it, I couldn't do it because I wouldn't have brought to you if it wasn't too much for me. But everything that I could stand, I've stood in it. And everything that I can take, I took it. And everything that I can put up with, I put up with it. But this right here overwhelms my very soul. He says, take this away. And I'm going to ask you today, what overwhelms you? What overwhelms you? What is the thing that overwhelms you, that overwhelms, that takes you out? That you drowned in. That's what he prayed about. Three times. Now, why would Paul have to pray three times? You know, he didn't have to pray three times um, to raise up the dead man who fell out of the window. You know what I mean? How how is it that God works so so good and when you're praying about other people's problems at home, but when it comes to your own, oh God, Lord, help me. I just got a question to ask if there's anybody that understands the words that are coming out of my mouth. How can we be so smart about everybody else's life but our own? Why are we so wise? When it comes to other people's stuff. But we can be such a fool when it comes to our own. Such a fool. Now, again... How could Paul, now how could he have the power and the courage and to turn in cities inside out and couldn't fix his own problem? He, he, he prays three times, three, for God to remove this. He says, take this curse off of me. So I can serve you how I want to serve you. So I can be who you want me to be. He says, I can do this if you could just fix this. He says, this, um, this is overwhelming me. This overwhelms me. And he says, God, I want you to take this away. He says, I'd be a better. I'd be better for you. If I was better with me. And he says, fix this. So come back next week and I'll, I'll, let, I'll go ahead and finish that for you guys next week. I'm just kidding. No, but I, it feels like there's somebody who can relate to this. I, I'm talking about there's somebody in the room or somebody listening to this that would fix it. And we're like, we're like, just fix it. And he says, it seems like you should want to fix this. I would be better for you if I didn't have this limitation. You know, do you, does, it, does everybody know what I'm talking about? See, this is this is a text I went to bed thinking about. I woke up thinking about. This is this is like I just couldn't get it away from me. This is the text I'm supposed to be preaching today, but there's either somebody 
in this room or over the internet, listen to my message. Maybe it's just for me, but maybe there's someone in this room that knows what it's like to be overwhelmed by something and say, God, if you can just take this away, I'd be a better mama. I'd be a better daddy. I'd be a better wife, a better husband. I'd be a better man. Just take this for me. Take this. This is too much for me. It overwhelms me. And the Paul <clears throat> who raised the dead and healed the sick and turned water into wine went to God on behalf of his own problem and he was overruled. So now I, know I need you to write down overruled. And so you pray to God three times and you're like, uh, objection, your honor. And he's like, overruled. Now, you have the right to object, but the Lord has the right to overrule. You may even have the right to, excuse me, you have the right to, to complain, but he has the right to, to overrule. You have the right to cry, but he has the right to overrule. And I am sent here to you this morning to task you and ask you, what do you do when God says no? What, what do you, like, what do you do when, when you've asked for a good thing? Not like like for a good thing, it's not like he's praying out of carnality, but and and asking for gold to come out of the water fountains. No, he's he, he's praying, he's praying for something. He he's asking for a good thing. What do you do when you pray for something good, and God says no? You know, great man of faith and power, you've been overruled. Praying, mama, you've been overruled. Some of us can, you know, we, we, there's been people who's, well, I'm not going there, but, you know, there's people who's counseled other, other couples and then their whole house is in that, you know, dismay. They've been overruled. Um, you got such a, you know, we can have such good advice for the people at work, but go home and want to jump out of a window. <clears throat> this being overwhelmed, overwhelmed. Um, you, but in the end you pray and you pray and you pray. And you get overruled. You know, you can have a loved one in the hospital. They're sick and they're pr and you're praying, you're fasting. You, you've anointed them with oil and you quoted scriptures and you're trying to believe God and you're trying to read everybody's books and everybody's tape that you can't. And then the life goes out of them. You've been overruled. You know, you've been overruled. You said, you know, you said all the right things. You pulled all the scriptures out. You told the nurse, he's he's going to be healed. You, you told the doctor, she's coming out of this. You testified to everybody. You quoted scriptures. You laid the Bible on their head. And they died right in front of your face. And the devil will look at you and say, where is your God now? Please believe me that he will say that. You've been overruled. Like in my own, like in my own life, my, uh, I came one morning from, from, from praying, from praying hard, wet, sweat from praying. I climbed on top of my mom and wept and prayed and she still died. And the enemy looked and said, where is your God now? Where is your God now? But what, what, what do you do when you have been, when you've been overruled? You have a, you had, a, you had everybody pray for the baby. And you still have the baby stillborn. That's what we're talking about here. That's that's what we need direction. That's what's happening in this text. That's what's happening to the apostle Paul, y'all. Paul, y'all. And if it can happen to Paul, y'all. If it happened to the guy who wrote the Bible, you ought to give God a little slack. <laughs> 